for blocks in the White House. It is late. It is almost one o'clock East Coast time. And uh, my son, Shane, I just talked to Shane. He's in bed. I am up. Let me see if I can get There's Jack right there. I am up hanging out with Jack. We are working. He's been editing video. Uh, I, so let me, I want to talk about the Twin Falls story for a second. Let me get the usual stuff out of the way. So we're brought to you by Citizen Journalism School, which is where I show you uh, how to do the kind of research I do. Deeply researched, always accurate, awesome journalism. Go to citizenjournalismschool.com to check that out. And, of course, Populist.tv, where we are going to bring you the stories. So I, I need to do a little bit of a reset on the Twin Falls story. And that's what I'm going to try to do in the next 10 minutes or so. So do me a favor, retweet this puppy. I'm going to talk about Twin Falls a little bit, why it's important, why Steve Bannon thought it was important. Steve Bannon, my former boss uh, who hired me at Breitbart, and uh, after Andrew Breitbart. It's a long story. Admittedly, it gets a little complex. Um, but uh, I was hired, I'm, I'm the only person, I think, who was hired by both Andrew Breitbart and Steve Bannon, and that's because I quit at one point. But uh, do me a favor, retweet this, let people know. Let me try to go over it uh, fairly, fairly briefly here. So uh, last year, I was the lead investigative journalist for Breitbart News. And uh, I was made aware before the conventions, before the Democrat and Republican conventions, which I covered, about a story in Twin Falls, Idaho. And a, a five-year-old girl there had been sexually assaulted by three boys who were refugees. And it had gotten some play on uh, WND. It had gotten some play on InfoWars. And I had been talked to about it a little bit, but I was busy with the conventions. And so I didn't think much of it. Then after the conventions ended, and, they, and in there I got arrested uh, in Baton Rouge, in there uh, police officers got killed. So a lot of things happened. But uh, after that, I was called into it again by Breitbart, who said, look, see if there's anything to this story. And so do you have the story about the... Uh, the father? Yes. Yeah. So I went up to Twin Falls, Idaho to do the reporting at the behest of Steve Bannon. And the first thing I did was I got an exclusive where I spoke to the victim's father. And turns out he had seen video of the assault. Now, you have to remember, let's back up a quick second here. When the assault happened... The, and bring up the Washington Post story now, please, Jack. The state's attorney, see if, for some reason this is yeah, I don't know. black and white. Black. See if you can highlight it. Well, that's, that makes it worse. <laughs> but you can see the Washington Post story here. Uh, the, the state attorney for the state of Idaho warned, and I'll read this to you just in case you're having trouble reading it. The spread of false information uh, or inflammatory or threatening statements. statements may result, may violate federal law. Now, this is a pretty chilling statement. This is a pretty chilling statement. Obviously, threats violate the law. You should not threaten people. Inflammatory statements, that's a tricky First Amendment issue because what's inflammatory? But go back to the story for one second. But that first one, the spread of false information may violate federal law. Uh, again, not to get too technical, it's a little late. But to quote Scooby-Doo, ranks? Right? Like, what is that? Like, what is up with that? So this had happened after this assault had happened. The state's attorney came in. Now, okay, so what's going on there? A girl's assaulted. The state's attorney says this, and even liberal attorneys were like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What do you mean inflammatory statements? And I, I was on with uh, George Webb and uh, my friend Jason Goodman, and Trish Dish, who I'd, I've never met before, so I didn't. Uh, but uh, Trish Dish is 
uh, I, I, I've never met her before, but, um, but, but she seemed lovely. And, uh, but I was on with Jason and I was talking about this story a little bit. That's weird, right? That's weird for the state's attorney to come out because in cases like the Mike Brown story in Ferguson, there was plenty of false information and no one threatened federal anything, right? And I don't think they should, right? Again, threatening, by the way, when threatening stuff happens in places like Ferguson, no one says anything. You dig? So you're with me so far? So I was concerned about this, but the first thing I, I did when I got to Twin Falls, this was last fall, uh, Twin Falls. This was last autumn, August, uh, right before my birthday. That's how I remember it. Because I spent my birthday, I spent two months up in Twin Falls, I'll tell you the story. But the first thing I did was I interviewed the father and we get this exclusive. Now, immediately Breitbart was kind of reticent. So for instance, I had video and audio of the uh, parent saying this, which I thought was pretty dramatic. And Breitbart didn't want to run with that. Okay, okay, that's, you know, understandable. They don't want to reveal the daughter. Uh, the parents, they don't want to reveal the victim. I get that it's a sexual assault. Okay. Now, as I looked at the story, the story was not, and, and, and one of the, and bring up the, uh, the Daily Beast story just so we can show them. Part of what's going on there is this lovely looking young man. This is Hamdi Yulakaya. He's the head of Chobani Yogurt. And this is a story that appeared in the Daily Beast later called the Disgusting Breitbart Smear Campaign Against the Immigrant Owner of Chobani. Now, already in that headline, you start to get what's going on here. Now, by the way, I'm not so sure that Hamdi Yulikai is an immigrant. Let me explain. He's a Turkish citizen, as far as I know. We ask him, uh, Michael Patrick Leahy did a lot of great reporting on this, but Hamdi Yulikaya how, who is he? How does he fit into things? Hamdi Yulikaya, let's look at him again because he's a beautiful person. Hamdi Yulikaya is the uh, CEO, owner, starter of Chobani Yogurt. And he built the world's largest yogurt factory in Twin Falls, Idaho. Uh, Twin Falls, Idaho, in case you're not aware, is dairy country. So there's a lot of dairies around there, which makes sense if you're going to open a yogurt factory. Now, couple things on Hamdi Yulikaya. Hamdi Yulikaya, and the way you may have heard of this story recently, is that both Glenn Beck and Alex Jones were forced to apologize for their reporting on it. I ain't apologizing. And the reason I ain't apologizing is because I got the story 100% right. Now, what I never said was that the refugees who assaulted that girl had anything to do with the yogurt factory. They, they weren't, as far as I'm concerned. However, what we know about Hamdi Yulikaya, a couple things. Number one, he's a major advocate for the refugee program. When I say major advocate, I mean he's been at the White House promoting it. Hillary Clinton promoted Hamdi Yulikaya a number of times. This is, he's a major advocate for it. He was a major advocate for comprehensive immigration reform. But let's talk about what I just said a little bit ago. I said, I'm not so sure that he's an immigrant. Let me explain. When we ask about his citizenship status, we got a no comment from Chobani Yogurt. They refused to comment on his citizenship status. Eventually, they kind of commented, I don't think he's a U.S. citizen. He's been here a long time. Furthermore, what is absolutely true is he got an SBA loan. I believe it was like a million dollars to start his yogurt factory. So he's in this country. He's not a citizen. He's not an American. He hasn't become an American yet, as far as I know, okay? But the issue to me was not that he's Muslim, which he is. The issue to me is that he's a globalist because I don't think he's all that Muslim. For instance, he's been a big advocate of gay and lesbian rights. Why? He did it when Democrats needed him to do it. So this is a guy who, when you research him, he's appeared at Davos. He's appeared at the Clinton Initiative, Clinton Foundation, on stage with Bill Clinton. So he's a big political player. You dig? You with me so far? 
This is why Steve Bannon, when I went up there and started doing the reporting, I said, look, this is not a story about, uh, he's not like a jihadist or anything like that. What the guy is, is he's a globalist who's figured out how to pay, play the political game. Now, one of the things he figured out how to do is he's friends with Chuck Schumer and Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton tweeted out stuff about him twice, at least twice, I think three times now that I think about it, during the election, for instance. He's figured out how to play the political game. And part of where he's made his money is from you, the taxpayer, because his buddy Chuck Schumer declared, and by the way, he's also friends with Republicans, this is globalism, right? So he's figured out how to play the political game, and he was able to, and bring up the, uh, the story that was spiked, because I'll get to this, but there's a story uh, that I posted at Populist, it's up right now, called Stories Alex Marl I Didn't Want You to Read. One of the stories, if you scroll down, uh, is about Chobani. It's the third story. Or the second story, forgive me. Oh, yeah, yeah, go to the second story. So when I say the guy's, I, I'm not questioning his, he's not a, 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 a fundamentalist Muslim. Can we play that uh, YouTube video? Oh, which one? The one that's in the middle of this article. Just keep rolling. Oh, yeah. I want you to see this. Now, by the way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a, this isn't something I should have to do. Wait, 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 just pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. Just come back to me for a sec. I should not have to give a not safe for work warning for a yogurt commercial. But I, I kind of do a little bit. Now, I know it's late night. And, and I am going to point out that my young, impressionable son, Jack, is right here. Jack, are you young and impressionable? I am. He is. Now, Jack, I, I got to warn you. What you're about to see may shock you. As my wife, my lovely wife, Jack's mom, said, I didn't know yogurt ads were so gay porny. Now, if that sounds outrageous, hold on one second. Let's play it. And then we'll come back to Jack's shocked face. This is the yogurt commercial that Chobani ran. Here we go. Let's just take a look at this. Okay, let's cut back to Jack and see. Jack, are you traumatized? I am, yeah. He's a little traumatized, you can tell. Okay, so my point here is that ad came out in the middle of the Democrat push for same-sex marriage. That's when it came out. So that's not the, I'm going to say it. If you're a devout Muslim, that ad is not the coolest thing. Just not. Because, as you may have noticed since in countries where they practice Sharia, they tend to throw the lesbians like off the buildings, not give them yogurt. I'm just saying. By the way, I'm opposed to that. I'm opposed. To, let me let me get this. Uh, Jack, I want to be clear on this. I'm opposed to throwing lesbians off buildings. There, I said it. By the way, I'm opposed to throwing anybody. I, I did that just to try to troll people. So if the people watching this, like the dude from the Daily Beast who attacked me dishonestly, came up and said it. But the point is, why did why did Hamdi Yulikaya run the lesbian yogurt ad, right? The gay, porny, lesbian. Because let's just go back. Run that again, Jack. Just run it again. Watch. Here's the thing. They know what they're doing at, at, on Madison Avenue. Let's watch her and the, let's watch the spoon action here, shall we? Let's... Let's just let's just watch. There it is. Ah, there it is. That's right. Ah. Ah. Yeah. She knows her way around a spoon. That's all I'm saying. I'm not judging. And you can see. You can see why we did the... Let's see. Let's check on Jack, shall we? Okay. He's okay. He's recovered. <laughs> He seems to have recovered. So here's, here's the point, though. 
This is who Hamdi Ulakaya is, you dig? Hamdi Ulakaya is a guy who's learned to get go along to get along. Okay? He's not playing the devout Muslim game. He's more playing the globalist game. So that's the story I was reporting on. I'm clearly I'm right. <laughs> because what Chuck Schumer did, and you can read about it in that article that Alex Marlowe spiked, which you can if you read this article. What Chuck Schumer did is he declared Greek-style yogurt, Shobani makes Greek-style yogurt, uh, a protein. And he did that so he could get it on the school lunch programs, which means a big federal contract. You with me? So chobani has got a big federal contract. And by the way, I don't know if you know much about the way Greek yogurt's made, but it's got like extra. Jack, do you, are you familiar with the Greek-style yogurt? No. It's made with extra mold. That's what it is. It's, it's with extra mold. And Jack, speaking for the voice of your uh, generation, do, do kids love the mold, right? No, not, not many. Okay, so, so anyway, the point is, what they did, and I point this out in the article, when they started forcing the kids, because here's the other thing, this, this relates to a Michelle Obama program where they would require you to give kids healthy food, but it didn't require you to, them to eat it. And so what it ended up with was millions of dollars in wasted food, including a lot of Chuck Chobani, from what I understand. A lot of Chobani was thrown away because kids aren't like, hmm, mold, hmm, more. Can I get some more, 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 more molds, uh, please? Might, might I have a bit more mold? There's a little Dickensian there for you. But anyway, the point is, go read the article. Go read the article. And I don't know why Breitbart didn't publish it, because it's a factual freaking article on political cronyism. And it's it's completely factual. Now, you, you tell me. But anyway, the point was, uh, Steve Bannon thought this was an important story, but while I was in Twin Falls, something weird happened, which was Steve Bannon was hired by Donald Trump. So suddenly Steve Bannon was no longer running things, and that's when they killed the story. So anybody who knows anything about me as a reporter knows that I'm a tenacious bulldog, and not just because of this face, right? That would be one reason to call me a bulldog, because this ain't a French poodle. I'm just saying. Otherwise, I would be thrown off a building by a Muslim. But, you know, a certain type of, I'm not saying all Muslims. Hamdi Ulakaya, who's a dog owner, wouldn't throw me. He is. He brags about that. He's a dog owner, so he's, you know, hip. But my point here is that, it, aside from the fact that I'm a little loopy because it's late and I, you know, had a stroke this weekend, aside from that, uh, my point here is I'm a tenacious bulldog of reporter. So right now, my son Shane is up in Twin Falls, Idaho. I just talked to him. We are going to finish reporting on this story. The fact that Alex Jones and Glenn Beck were forced to apologize because Chobani threatened to sue him, and in fact actually sued Alex Jones. Do you know what that makes me want to do? It makes me want to report on the story a lot more. That's what it makes me want to do. I'm not going to pretend, I'm not going to give you two, pretend my middle finger is up here, there, that's what I've just picture it. That's what it makes me do. Right there, Chobani. Right there, Hamdi. Boom. You know what? You can't... First off, I just get the story right, sucker. Second off, you, A, not an American citizen, so I don't even know how you got the SBA loan, but I know lots of Americans would like a million-dollar SBA loan, but I digress. And all the crony stuff you got up in Twin Falls, but I digress. You don't get to sue people. You don't. You don't get to sue people and intimidate them, which is what I know you do. I know you do that, Hamdi. I know you do that. You get to get called out on your political cronyism, which is proven. No, I don't think you had anything to do with the sexual assault. What I pointed out is that the refugees are in Twin Falls. Now, not because of you, they were there before, but you're a big advocate for the refugee program. And so what's happened is nobody in the city council wants to say anything. In fact, 
One of the things that happened, which is another outrage, why do you think the state's attorney came out and threatened people? Why, why do you think they did that? But one other story that I published, uh, to bring up the Greg Lanting one, I, I was all over, is this story where this politician from Twin Falls insulted the family of the victim on Facebook and because of my reporting was forced to apologize. See, I see this as the big guy versus the little guy and the little guy is the family of the victim. I should also point and just bring the thing of me. Uh, yeah, it's okay. And I, I, here's local TV. Local TV, local newspaper, I, I, I was there. I did an interview. I look about as fabulous as I do right now. That was before I, I didn't know I'd need my suits. But anyway, this is what's going on with Twin Falls. It's another one of these big, complex stories that uh, I think is really important. We're working on a short film about it, but I wanted to give you some idea of the background on it. There we go. Any, let me, hang on one sec. Let me see the iPad for a sec. The, I'm going to tell you, the weird thing about doing... Is this... Wait one second. Yeah. The weird thing... This, see, there's a delay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you to do two things. First off, if, if you would, retweet this puppy. To let, again, we like to let people know what we're doing here. Second thing, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them and I will read this and try to answer your questions. But there's going to be a delay. There's, there's going to be a delay. Because there's a delay between me and the periscope. When we do these fancy periscopes, there's a delay. Yeah, retweet, retweet. Thanks for saying that. Again, there's a delay. I'm just look I'm just gonna have some coffee. Uh so so someone's asking if he's still on the Fed board. He was an advisor, Hamdi Ulakai was an advisor on the Federal Reserve of New York border. I'm not sure if he was an advisor, I'm not sure what his role is. As far as I know, he was uh he he still is. There's another question, I missed it, so you have to ask it again. That's the the hell of these delays. And I should, I mean, look, when I do this, I know you're looking at the top of my head, and it's not a pretty picture looking at the top of a 51-year-old man. Well, we're going to, yeah, someone's a little lost. In the, yeah. So someone's saying, brother in Twin Falls, someone about the sexual assault, that's what I'm doing. There's someone being foolish, apparently. That'll happen. It happens, Jack. It happens. I'll eventually explain, by the way, why I think I had the mini stroke. I think I, I think I know. Someone's making fun of my looks, Jack. Someone's saying, someone's saying that it's better looking the bottom half. See, dummy. Beat you to it. That's the thing, is I beat you to it. I do self, I've already talked about, I'm not the most attractive person in the world. What do you think, you hurt my feelings? Boo frickin' who, loser. Anything else? <laughs> See, this is the thing. They can't, they, they can't beat me in terms of, uh, they, 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 can't, they can't challenge the facts. They never get the facts right. I'm, I am taking care of my health. Yeah, no, I have, I've lost a lot of weight. Anyone's, anyone's saying it. So, yeah, and I don't, like I say, I don't, like, I look how I look, and I'm married, and look, I make, I make cute kids. 
Look at this attractive. Yes, yeah, look at that. Jack's Jack's tall and they he does. Uh, ladies like Jack, don't they, Jack? Yeah, I know. Also, his jeans look fantastic. By the way, just show him. Just stand up. He pinned his jeans. He pinned his jeans. So, so literally, we walked into a, a clothing store today, and the first thing the attendant noticed was like, "Wow, look at those jeans!" And the attendant was very impressed. You pinned your jeans. So there you go. So what do I need? I'm not trying to date anybody, you know. Okay, that's it. Listen, it's late. We got to get up early. We we, we do the Stranahan. Uh, it used to be the Stranahan report. It's now the Populist Daily Briefing, whatever we call it, Populist Morning Report. You can subscribe to that Stranahan.com, or you can go to Populist.tv. Go up to the corner. You'll be able to find it. Hey, if you want to help out with the donation, look. Because of your donations, Shane is in Twin Falls right now. Because of your donations, we're building a different kind of news, a different type of news, news that doesn't suck, news that gets the facts right, right? News that presents a nonpartisan view. I don't carry water for anybody, but I will say this. I'm loyal to Steve Bannon. I love that guy. I respect that guy. And the same way I'm loyal to Andrew Breitbart's legacy, I feel I'm loyal to, uh, to Steve Bannon's legacy. That's what I'm doing. And, uh, and we do it every day on the radio. And by the way, one other quick note. We announced today big news. Go watch the Twitter. Go watch. Uh, it's pinned. The third segment of Fault Lines. But I'm going to mention this again. Fault Lines, a radio show that I co-host with Garland Nixon. I'm a Trump supporter. He's a Bernie Sanders supporter. We're about to go terrestrial. We are going to be on FM 105.5 here in the Washington, D.C. area. That's why I signed a year lease to my, uh, to my house here. We're going to be terrestrial on 105.5 FM. This is a major boost. That means we're suddenly going to be heard and the liberal media who's been putting this anti-Russian BS. The fact that Russian, uh, the Russians are now on FM, I mean, just like brain explosions all over the place. It's going to be so beautiful uh, to hear. But we're also doing new periscopes. Jack is the one responsible for those. Jack is doing the periscopes. Jack, Jack is learning the Shane School of lean in and give a thumbs up, right? Yeah. That's it, basically. Um, and look beautiful. That's what he's learned. But the fact that we are going on FM radio is going to be so great, we're going to add callers. If you have not been listening to Fault Lines, watch us in the Periscopes. I'm telling you, we are the most disruptive radio show in America. If you want to talk about something that goes counter-narrative, that's what we do at Fault Lines. Anyway, that's it. I love you guys. I appreciate it. We've not done one of these in a while. As I mentioned, I had some health problems. I really appreciate everybody uh, keeping me in their prayers. I really do. I really do. And I say, I, you know, I say that, um, uh, you know, it was a, it was a, um, it was a little scary for a couple of days for me. And uh, I think I'm going to be okay. But uh, I, I really do consider myself very blessed and very lucky to have you guys as an audience. I, 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 I'm out here in Washington for you. I try to keep myself accessible for you. And the work that I'm doing uh, is, is for you. And I have a selfish motive too, which is I love my children. And I'm trying to save this country for them. Uh, and that's what I'm doing. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, Till next time, I'm Lee Stranahan. Bye-bye.